Things a narcissist and flying monkeys fear you will do. Everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining me again today. If you want to keep up with my channel, please make sure to subscribe. And if you're coming back, we're happy to have you and want to ensure you don't miss any updates. As always, I hope today is fantastic for all of you. In today's video, we will see several things narcissists and their flying monkeys fear you will do, and you can be sure that both groups have good reason to be terrified of you. So the narcissist and the flying monkeys are terrified of what you will do and say, and they are most afraid of the truth. The narcissist and the flying monkeys are petrified that you will see through their plans. You scare the shit out of them because they worry you will see through their gaslighting, manipulation and abuse. Many things might be on the list of things they dislike when you do them, but here are just a few. Understanding their behaviours, identifying the signs of their abuse and psychological manipulation, beginning the healing process and finding emotional support while working through the difficult tasks of trauma recovery. Last but not least, another fear factor is the truth seekers and whistleblowers who the narcissists and flying monkeys truly fear. The truth seekers and whistleblowers pose a serious threat to both the narcissist and the flying monkey. They should be scared of us because we want to reveal the truth. We're not going to keep quiet, be intimidated or play into the family's games anymore. They are terrified of this and will go to great lengths to stop this from happening. As a result, they're putting you in a position of anxiety and unease if you are a truth seeker, an empath, a highly compassionate person, a whistleblower, a scapegoat, or the black sheep of the family. They are establishing and upholding reasonable constraints. The flying monkey's biggest issue with you is that you don't respect their space, which is a significant sore spot for the narcissist. They are completely inconsiderate of your space. That's why they'll keep trying to test you to the breaking point, and I can only say, don't cave to their demand at all. Instead, stand firm within your limits, knowing that you are doing so for a good reason. The narcissist and the flying monkeys are terrified of rejection and isolation. Recently, they've had a reminder of their narcissistic need for attention. These individuals prioritize their own needs above those of others. They have a healthy respect for themselves, but not for others. Ray rocked. They're depressed because they're afraid you'll cut off contact with them. They will get resentful and may even lash out at you or have an emotional breakdown if you stop talking to them or confiding in them, especially on a regular basis, such as once a week or once a day. Because they have been accustomed to receiving your attention, they will turn to the grave rock technique or quit falling for their crazy-making techniques the moment you stop offering it to them. I no longer want to talk to you. Expect something like that. The narcissist will lose their cool and freak out. As a result, you can expect severe retaliation from them. Now that we've established that, I can move on to the next thing narcissistic people worry about, becoming old, getting sick and being rejected. Narcissists are sensitive souls who worry that the smallest setbacks, such as growing old, losing a loved one to illness or being rejected, would shatter their fragile egos. In addition, and I'm assuming most of you did discover this one, it is that the narcissist and the flying monkeys are worried that you would cut off their source of narcissistic reinforcements. Narcissists need a narcissistic supply, which consists of constant attention, praise and affirmation from others to maintain their sense of entitlement. Their sense of entitlement and egotism are winning out. In an uncertain world, the narcissist and the flying monkeys find security in their own narcissistic supply. Narcissists cannot exist in an environment where their supply is diminished. They report feeling the same way while using it as they would when using a narcotic. If you obtain heroin from an addict, you might anticipate a negative reaction. 
it's the same case here. This is what happens when a narcissist doesn't get enough praise and admiration on a given day. There's something in common between narcissists and flying monkeys, a crippling fear of being alone. Toxically awful aims and a wide range of criminal behaviours are within their capabilities. I'm getting to the point that their situation is a never-ending spiral of sadness. The narcissist and the flying monkeys are both terrified at the prospect of being publicly exposed by you. Though you might find a different outcome because of how special you are. At some future family reunion, you might share your story about the narcissist and the flying monkey with your loved ones. The narcissist and flying monkeys are likely terrified of the reactions of their friends, family, neighbours, co-workers and community members to the news that they have been abusing you, that they no longer have control over you, and that there may be legal consequences for their actions because you have a blog, published an essay or shared anything on social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc. The narcissist and the flying monkeys are especially most afraid of you going no contact or starting to distance yourself from them. One of their biggest concerns is that you won't make any further contact with them. Narcissists fall into profound despair when they are cut off from their narc supply, or people they may use as a scapegoat. The flying monkeys are also worried that your life will improve without them around and that you will be able to put the past behind you and go on with your life. Maybe you used to date Mary, or otherwise be intimate with the narcissist in question. They know full well that their worst nightmare is for you to meet someone who treats you like the person that you are. Things about narcissists and the flying monkeys are still so much more. Feel free to leave your opinions in the comment section below, and please know that there is life after narcissistic abuse, a better one. It can take years, yes, but life would be so much better without them. Feel free to share your thoughts by commenting down below. Discuss the parts of today's message that particularly resonated with you. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. What goes on the narcissist minds when they're scheming against a strong opponent? A narcissist has an unhealthy obsession with authority. Trusting them will place you in potentially life-threatening situations from which you will be unable to escape. What they want more than anything is for you to feel helpless and defenseless. What they want you to believe is that you'll never amount to anything once they're gone. To anyone who develops any sort of attachment to a narcissist, nothing except mental and emotional distress is on offer here. Those who feed you lies and set up circumstances in which you are more inclined to believe them will lead you astray. In this video, I'll be discussing three tactics narcissists use to make the rest of us look bad. Narcissists come into our lives with the sole aim of taking what they want and destroying anything that gets in their way. They utilize the allure of positivity and warmth to control and abuse anyone they encounter. The list of things they want more of is endless, influence, fame, fortune, and more, you name it. They will do whatever it takes, financially and politically, to succeed. They play the part of the helpless victim or courageous hero in order to capture our sympathy and then use it for their own ends. Their primary objective is to instill in us an irrational fear of challenging their authority. In their pursuit of their goals at our expense, they are willing to stoop to whatever means required. Even among their closest friends and partners, narcissists continue to seek supremacy. Whether at home, in the workplace, or elsewhere, narcissists seek for ways to center attention on themselves. They hone in on key decision makers and exert maximum effort to win them over. If they want to stay in touch with you, they might act as if they share all of your most cherished characteristics and beliefs. The narcissist, in reality, will never be willing to give in. The primary objective would be to impersonate or usurp the target's position of authority 
without their knowledge or consent. The most defenceless among us may be easy prey for narcissists, but some argue that the powerful are also fair game. You can't help but feel the glare of a narcissist's attention when you're engaging with them. They intend to complete the primary task, which they now fully understand, even after getting entry. They are conspiring and planning to wipe you from the face of the earth. They will do everything it takes to make sure you are destroyed entirely. Things like these are inevitable. When it comes to narcissists, the timing is just up in the air. The ultimate goal of the narcissist is to dominate all facets of existence. It's important to remember that narcissists will try to use your connections against you. Any relationships with narcissists will deteriorate as a result of their obsession with themselves. In order to improve their own standing, they will lie about you and your loved ones. They will go out of their way to sow seeds of distrust in your loved ones about your integrity. The ultimate goal of a narcissist is for you to give up on them, follow their demands, and give them more attention and dominance. A narcissist will take advantage of you because they desire complete power over you and you have no defences against them. A narcissist will try very hard to make you feel inferior to them. Their mistrust of you would grow visibly as a result. It's always unsettling when a narcissist suddenly shifts from boosting your confidence to tearing you down. Why? Because they can, and do so exceptionally effectively. This abrupt about-face lends credence to the argument that their criticisms and devaluations are equally warranted. But they wouldn't just listen to what you had to say. They'd evaluate you based on how you carried yourself and what you wore. Since this has happened, people have reason to doubt your very existence. They will try to get you to accept lies by using a method called gaslighting, which will cause you to doubt your own sanity and talents. If they were angry or disgusted, their eyes would be blazing. They will become frustrated or angry with you in no time if you give them a chance. Instead of supporting you, they will try to bring you down. To try to persuade narcissists of anything at this moment is futile. You'll start to question your own intelligence, attractiveness and worth as a result of their continual psychological attacks. A narcissist may use emotional blackmail if they are cornered and have no other options. There has been nothing but bad press about you from the get-go, with accusations of being a narcissist, relationship killer, divisive divider and gaslighter. That's been the main point of concern for them. These drills demand a great deal of your time and energy, both mentally and physically. And to add insult to injury, the narcissist will probably make your time together miserable and toxic. This is because a narcissist's mood can swing dramatically, from pleasant and talkative one day to hostile and silent the next. Narcissists can ghost or suddenly cease talking to you. Suddenly, they became the devil, as if they had a change of heart. Your physical and mental health may suffer if you are constantly on the run from the narcissist's wrath and confrontation. Narcissists are either unaware or uncaring about the effect of their actions on those around them. However, they continue to intentionally subject us to a great deal of distress. After all, stress on the mind or heart might cloud one's judgement. As a matter of fact, stress has measurable physiological impacts. When you're under stress, your critical thinking skills weaken making you more susceptible to persuasion. However, you should realise that the narcissist's goal is to dominate you by any means necessary, including breaking you down. It's as though you've run into an impenetrable barrier. The narcissist takes your opinion seriously for this same reason. They will have total control over you if they can get inside your head and kill you. Always keep in mind that none of this will amount to anything unless you've earned the narcissist's trust. That's why they tried so hard to win us over in the first place. That's why they work so hard to convince us they're the chosen one, 
or at the very least, decent human beings deserving of our faith. Once they have our attention, they use it to their advantage by convincing us to believe their lies. The primary requirement of a narcissist is that they receive zero attention from you. They will take your ideas and complaints seriously and act on them. Because of this, I will never advise that you reach a middle ground with them. Those who are narcissistic struggle to find contentment in their lives. As a result, they fail to appreciate the significance of the work that has been done on their behalf. Selfish individuals will never cease telling lies and disseminating incorrect information about you. Don't hang around with people that are negative role models for you. Maintain complete secrecy from them. Your friends and family would be better off without this individual and their lives. When it comes to our own and those around us, we need to invest more time and effort than we already are. I pray you found some insight here that will help you. Your attention to my video and, more importantly, your consideration of what I had to say meant a great deal to me. Feel free to share your opinions and experiences with the world by commenting below. Please subscribe to this channel and enable bell alerts so you don't miss any new uploads. Thank you so much. When the mask slips, the narcissist will do anything to prevent you from finding this. Narcissists exaggerate their abilities and qualities because they are always trying to boost their shaky self-esteem by listening to others' compliments. Narcissist acts very differently than they do once they are actually dating. The gap between their childhood and adult behavior gives rise to the misconception that narcissists put on a facade to trick those around them. This is the idea that narcissists are all predators hiding behind carefully crafted masks. The narcissist will leave you, defame you, destroy you if you uncover their true identity, or so the idea goes. To cover up their own shortcomings, narcissists present an overblown sense of self-confidence. Everyone, thank you for joining us for today's episode. Since this channel focuses on outing narcissists, I'm curious about the conditions under which a covered one can become obvious. When are they going to quit playing roles and say what's on their minds? Here are three instances where covert narcissists could reveal their true colors. To avoid boring you, I'll start with the simplest explanation and work my way up to the more complex ones, so thank you for you. It is no secret that the covert narcissist is a gifted performer. Performing in front of an audience causes a dramatic change in them that extends beyond their outward appearance. But their non-verbal cues also change. They may have different dialects and accents as well. Covert is an excellent choice for a narcissist because of the extreme importance they place on their own image. This is why the covert narcissist is so gushens and present just the side of themselves that they deem appropriate in public. Narcissists are notoriously closed off and secretive. Of course, there are specific places and circumstances when this holds true. Narcissists are reluctant to be authentic outside of their safe area, which is often their own home. Those unlucky enough to share a home with a narcissist, such as a spouse or a child, receive a front row ticket to the narcissist's true nature. These people are the ones that notice the narcissist's role change from victim to the offender. It's possible that the covert narcissist will let their guard down in other settings as well. On rare occasions, it is on purpose, but more commonly, it is accidental. In a matter of seconds, the narcissist will realize they have relaxed their defenses unintentionally. If you fail to see those fleeting micro-expressions, you'd be completely confused. Because covert is in check in public, there are occasions in which they may momentarily lose it. The emotions we neglect to acknowledge while expressing disgust and fury. One possible explanation for this behavior is that the narcissist is bored or feeling disrespected. Covert narcissists will often put on a false smile or laugh to cover this up. 
But don't be fooled into thinking that this is who they really are. Let's speak about what happens when a narcissist takes off their mask in an unfamiliar setting. The belief that no one is watching is a primary source of security for a covert narcissist. The narcissist would never show their evil eye to another person in public. To the narcissist, human relationships are pointless and irrelevant. Jealousy drives them, and they'll find any reason to detest someone they perceive as a threat. As the narcissist leaves their safe space, they may reveal more of who they really are in an effort to intimidate or gain power over the other person. In an effort to scare their victim, narcissists often resort to harsh, unfiltered expressions of disdain or rage during private, one-on-one -on -one interactions where no witnesses are present, and they could use the evil eye if they wanted to. In addition to abusive conduct at home, covert narcissists can be antagonistic in other settings as well. The real covert narcissist rarely presents a flattering image, because beneath that nice demeanor lurks a heartless monster of jealousy and malice. But as we've seen, the covert narcissist is cunning in their use of the mask and other deceitful and manipulative strategies. Their mask hides who and what they really are behind it. The mask must be removed at some point, because hiding is impossible and when it's removed, you will finally see what kind of a person you're dealing with. That's all I can say in today's video, so I'll see you again in the next video. Please leave a comment below, and if you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends by clicking the thumbs up button. The Lord bless you, and keep you as you go about your week. Have a nice day, everyone. When a narcissist gives you total affection, this is what you should be worried about. Everyone, welcome. I was hoping you could permit me to begin by greeting you all and extending a warm welcome. Thank you for watching this video as always. If you're just tuning in, know that my goal is to reveal the narcissist, and that today I'll be discussing how narcissists fool us into thinking they're capable of love. Narcissists typically view love partners as a means to an end, a way to boost their inflated sense of self-worth through praise and sexual activity. Narcissists prefer isolation and superiority in interpersonal connections, and they hate to display their vulnerable side. That's why they always pretend to be something, to love you, to care about you. Narcissists often fail to recognize the uniqueness of others, viewing them instead as mere reflections of themselves. Narcissists can appear passionate at the beginning of a relationship, but that kind of zeal is always directed within, at their own thoughts and needs. Narcissists adore us because they aim for something we can offer them. Communication is seen as a means to an end rather than an end in itself by most narcissists. The goal is carefree amusement with no serious obligations. They may pay close attention to potential romantic interests and attempt to woo them with compliments, sex, romance, and promises of commitment. But I guess it's time to end all that. Those that genuinely care for us are demonstrative in their actions, and these actions frequently involve physical contact. They appear to value face-to-face -face interaction and actively seek it out. Because most individuals want to receive and offer love, narcissists incorporate this into the love bombing phase. Mainly because the narcissist craves contact and because of the depth of meaning it may impart and the speed with which it can foster trust. The problem is that many narcissists use displays of affection for their personal benefit. Whether in public or in private, narcissist is focused on themselves. The term public display of affection, which is what PDA stands for, is the focus of my discussion today. Simply put, when two individuals care for one another sincerely, they can't help but show it. But narcissists are different, and they frequently employ it to fool their victims and society at large. Narcissists wish to be viewed as caring and loving by those around them. 
This is because they want their loved ones to believe that they are completely devoted to them. Personal experience tells me that narcissists are notoriously generous with the physical manifestations of their affection in the early stages of a relationship, also known as the love-bombing phase. As a relationship progresses, though, PDA becomes more strategic. Be warned, however, that any effort a narcissist may engage in is entirely for show. The biggest sign that you are over the love-bombing period of your relationship is when you start devaluing each other behind their backs. Behind closed doors, you receive nothing but insults, oblivion and scorn. If they suddenly declare their undying love for you, you can bet they have something they want from you in return. Narcissists are very deliberate in their displays of adoration. Simply put, they only seem willing to show affection when surrounded by very close friends and family. During these times, they are at ease, portraying a more caring, attentive and affectionate persona. They may even extol your virtues to others. Believe me, no good will come from the narcissist's desire to help you. That's why it's best to infer malice whenever their actions border on kindness. They'll ignore and mistreat you behind your back, yet put on a happy face in front of an audience or when it suits their purposes. For the most part, a narcissist cares only about what other people think of them. You can feel as ignored and abused as you like. It won't bother them in the least. They don't give a hoot if you're pleased or sad. Don't worry about whether or not you actually believe it. What's important is that you act as if you do. They will, of course, have a lengthy list of excuses if you try to pin down the source of this sudden change in behaviour behind closed doors. Their lack of focus could be due to any number of factors, including work-related stress, illness, or simply being distracted. The narcissist, meanwhile, cares only about himself or herself and what he or she can get out of the relationship. If they care about you, showing their affection shouldn't cost them anything. There's no excuse for acting inappropriately because of the presence of others. It should come from a place of sincerity and true longing for a meaningful relationship with you. When things are going well in a relationship, a narcissist may want you to do nothing but shower all over them, but when things turn sour, they may not want you to touch them at all. There won't be much physical contact outside of hugs, pecks on the cheek, and hand-holding. If the narcissist discovers a new source of supply, they may quit displaying affection in public and in private. When their emotional needs are being met by someone else, they may no longer feel the need to be close to you. The narcissist would likely react negatively and be hostile toward you in this situation. However, as we have seen, the narcissist's display of affection, like any other act of generosity on their side, is phony and comes with strings attached. They expect something from you, that's all you need to know. Narcissists are incapable of genuine displays of affection and must resort to manipulation to create the illusion that they care. For many reasons, but especially because so many people everywhere yearn to feel appreciated and loved, narcissists use that as a loophole. We can only keep an eye out for any potential symptoms of trouble. And don't fall into the traps that narcissists lay for you. There, declaring love for you is a calculated performance for the show. I hope this information has been useful to you. Please help us by clicking the like button and telling your friends if you enjoy watching my videos. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please your videos. Thank you for your time.